Hello everyone, welcome to this video. This time we are going to talk about how to analyze using finite element analysis with FEM and EE core inductor, but in this case using a non-linear material. So this is a continuation of a previous video. The previous video was FEM number two entitled Analysis of an EE core based inductor in which we have used a linear material, a generic ferrite, in order to implement our inductor. So in this video we are going to see an introduction, then we will see the um, characteristic of the N87 material, how to add this N87 material to our model, then we will see some of the results, and finally, we will see how to use Lua script for calculating the inductance at several current levels automatically. So this is the model that we developed in our previous video. Here we can see the drawing of the core. And we have used for the ferrite, as we can see here in this block property, a linear relationship between the magnetic field intensity and the magnetic field density with a constant value of the permeability in both directions equal to 2200. So in this case, if we increase the current that is circulating through the coil, there is not going to be any change in the inductance because the permeability is constant. Now in this video, what we are going to do is to use a nonlinear relationship here between these both quantities. So we are going to use this part in order to define the nonlinear material properties. So let's see how to do this in the next slides. The first step is to obtain the information corresponding to the BH curve of our material. In this case, we can see here the N87 characteristic obtained from the manufacturer's datasheet. And from this, we can go and select different points in the characteristic. And then we can, with this information, get this table here that we can save in a file. So we have here the corresponding points of the BH characteristic of our material. And now we can go to our design and add a new material corresponding to the N87. So for this we go to properties, materials, and we are going to add a new property. So in this case, our material is going to be N87. And now we want to have a nonlinear BH curve. So we go here and select edit the BH curve. And because we have the information directly in a text file, we can go here, read BH points from text file and select our file. Here and we select and that B is in the first column and H in the second column. The unit as Tesla for the magnetic field density and ampere meter for the magnetic field intensity. So it is OK. So we have here the corresponding information. Now we want to plot, for example, the BH curve. So take a look at the curve. And we can see here that the curve looks quite good. So we can go ahead and say OK here and OK here and then OK here also. And now we can modify the material that we are going to use in our core. So for this, we select this button here. So now we can select the material, right click on the mouse and then spacebar and then select here the nonlinear material N87 and say OK here. So we have ready the core with the new material. Let's now analyze our inductor with a low value of the current. So for this go to properties, circuits and select the coil modify property and we are going to select here a current through the coil of only 0.5 amperes and see the result so 
we can now run the program and see the results so we can see here the magnetic flux lines and also we can see if we like the density plot so now we are going to measure in these points inside the core and we can see that the magnetic flux density now is around 0.1 tesla in this all pink area of the uh, material and the value of the inductance we can do this by selecting the the coil button and then we can see here and that the value is around one millihenry as expected and similarly as the value that we obtain for the case of the linear material because in this case we are operating around this point here so as long as we are operating in this linear part of the VH curve the value of the inductance is not going to change much but when we are entering in the saturation part of the curve in this part here then the permeability of the material is going to decrease and this is going to make that our inductance is going to decrease also so let's see this with another running of the program we are going to select now again our circuit and let's increase for example the current to 1.5 amperes say ok and run again our program and see in the results so now if we go to the output window and measure in the magnetic flux density now it's much higher it's around 0.32 tesla in this pink area so now and the value of the inductance as we can see here is still more or less the, the same is around one millihenry okay in this case we are still operating here in this area so the uh, we are working still in the linear part so we are going to increase a little bit the value of the current and see another results so I'll go again to properties circuits modify property and let's now for example get 2.5 amperes say ok and run again and see the results so now here the magnetic flux density is much higher is around 0.47 tesla so in this case we are operating in this part here so clearly here the permeability which is the slope of this curve is going to be much lower so the value of the inductance should be also lower so we go to this button here and now we can measure the value of the, of the inductance and now is around 0.86 millihenry so it's quite lower than the value of one millihenry that we have measured before now we are going to see how to calculate automatically the value of the inductance for different values of the current for this we are going to use the lua scripting language that comes with fem so here we can see the lua script that we are going to use for this function we are changing the value of the current from 0.4 up to 4 amperes in steps of 0.2 ampere and then we are going to do these different statements this first command here is to modify the circuit property corresponding to the coil and the property that we are going to modify is the current through the coil so this number here the number one corresponds to the property of the current through the coil and this is the value that we are assigning to the current through the coil then with this command here we do the analysis 
then we load the solution and then with these four statements here what we are doing is selecting the blocks in which we are going to calculate the integral of the magnetic field energy so with these blocks here we are selecting the air gap the two coils and the ferrat material the, the magnetic material so we can see that in order to select any block we only have to provide here a point inside the corresponding block so for example this point here 12.40 corresponds to this point here inside the air gap then once we have selected the different blocks with this statement here we are going to calculate the integral of the magnetic field energy this number here number two means that we want to calculate the integral of the magnetic field energy then with this expression as we know we calculate the inductance which is twice the energy divided by the current squared and finally we print the result you can get more information about lua scripting going to help and in the chapter 3 corresponding to lua scripting you will get additional information also you can get more information about lua language by visiting this link here so now let's see how to execute our script for this we go to view lua console and we open the console so here we copy our script and then just click on evaluate and the program is going to run with the different values that we have assigned to the current so here in the console we can see the different values that we are getting for the current and for the value of the inductance so we can see that at the beginning for lower values of the current the value of the inductance keeps almost constant and we can see that it is almost one millihenry but as long as the current is increasing we can see how the value of the inductance is decreasing so now for example for 3 amperes we are getting only 0.6 millihenry so now the program is finishing we can see in green the regions in which we have calculated the integral in order to obtain the value of the inductance because at the end in the other regions the energy is very low and here we have our final results we can copy these values and take them in order to do a representation for example we can take these values to uh, WinPython as we have seen in previous videos how to do representations in WinPython so we have uh, copied here the different values of the inductance and the current so if we execute this script here then we can see the value of the inductance as a function of the current which is circulating through it so we can see how rapidly our inductance is quite constant up to a current of nearly 2 amperes beyond 2 amperes we don't have a constant inductance anymore because the inductance is decreasing very quickly as it is expected for a real life inductor well this is all in this presentation today i hope this is useful for you please let me know if you have any comment or question thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you in our next video goodbye now